just off your shoulder. Yep. For example, you have trouble getting into that Definitely. externally kind of rotating position. Yep. Do you work to what your shoulder can do or is that going to create an overload in your shoulder once you're coming up and around? Uh, so using myself as the example, I can do double unders all day with my right hand mm -hmm. because I've got that elbow movement yep. and the mo uh, movement through my wrist. My left arm, in particular my tricep fries out yep. because I just don't have the movement yep. and I find myself actually pulling it behind. Uh, I just don't think I have the motor control and yep. I think I actually try to do too much with, your left with my left. Yep to compensate, well, to bring it up to the level mm. that my right hand is working. Yes. Maybe I overthink it because I, I teach this stuff all the time, <laughs> but it's like my right arm's doing it well, yep. my left arm needs to get up to get up to that position. So... Are you seeing that you say your tricep fries out? Yeah, yeah. Because if you've had shoulder reef, I would assume that your posterior but, cuff yeah. is not working as well. Yep. Therefore, your tricep has to keep you in this position. There you go. Which is something that I've seen people coming in with common injuries yep. from, from double unders is tricep tendinopathies. There you go. Which is, that just kind of came to me then. Yep. Uh, Achilles yep. problems and calf problems, yep. mostly. Yep. And some kind of like shin splinty yep. sort of pain. So yeah. That's interesting how that you've kind of told me that it isn't actually coming from the wrist yep. as much as it is the elbow. Yes. That kind of all starts to make sense now. Yes. Yeah. And that's one of the areas where people don't quite get the double under. Mm. It's yes, I can get it around. Hey, I can do a hundred double unders unbroken, yep. but then I start to fry out. Yes. Um, there's an inefficiency there. Yeah. And that inefficiency is not understanding the movement correctly or, mm -hmm. or not recognizing what works best. Yep. And the elbow is a massive part mm -hmm. of the double under. So is the wrist, don't get me wrong, but it's easier to do a hundred reps like this yep. than to do a hundred reps like just this, your wrist. just your wrist. 100%. Yeah, And that also throws in a whole bunch of other things in there. Like if we're just doing wrists, our arms are starting to fry. We start to go wide as mm. well as we fatigue. Yep. And that's going to create a whole host of problems with shortening the rope at the feet. Therefore a high chance that you're going to trip. Trip and yeah. then lose your, lose your right now. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes sense. So how much elbow extension would you be required? Okay. In, in, in a, yeah, um, if, in a double under. So if we if we want to get that optimal position mm -hmm. again, so it's uh, athletic neutral. Mm -hmm. So our feet together, we've got our hips back, butts on, tight through our midline, uh, elbows back, palms forward. We want to try and maintain it around uh, our waist kind of line. Yeah. Um, but what we want to be conscious of is uh, too much movement through the elbow is going to affect. Uh, what we call the axis of rotation, yeah. which is the center, your hand, mm -hmm. the center of the rope rotating around the body. Yep. So we want to maintain that in front, in the frontal plane. Yep. So this kind of movement in the frontal plane, whereas if we do an excessive uh, elbow movement, we're going to go behind the body yeah. and you can see that there's going to create an imbalance with the cable, yeah. but it's also going to bring that axis of rotation behind the body. That's uh, right. Okay. So then the cable, it's a three dimensional object that's mm -hmm. going around your body. If you then go one, two, you've changed that axis of rotation by, you know, let's say 20 centimeters yeah. thereabouts. And ideally that cable is going to be just skipping around about a foot length or so, mm -hmm. just grazing the ground by so changing. You see people start to hit themselves in the shins. Uh, absolutely, the yeah. toes definitely. So if you kind of pull the rope behind you, one, two, one, two, mm -hmm. back like this, yeah. you've got an axis of rotation behind you. Ah, okay. So it's going to be coming closer to the toes. Yep. Now, interesting that you say that you see people hitting themselves in the shin. Mm -hmm. The other area is the axis of rotation coming forward too far. So mm -hmm. my elbows are going to be coming more uh, in front of my torso. Yep. Axis, of, axis of rotation is in front. Yep. Therefore the cable is going to be hitting the floor way out in front. Yep. And once it hits the floor, it's only got one way to come. Back up. Ah. Bounce and then come back up. So yep. if it's hitting the shins, I'm more inclined to think that their hands are going to be out in front and it's, and it's forwards. 
that's right. Okay. Yeah, so hitting the floor and bouncing up. Whereas if their hands were back, mm -hmm. it'll be coming down and hitting their toes. Yes, okay, that makes sense. It's bouncing off the ground, coming back up. That's right. Yeah, yeah right. so that hand position's in front. 